can tune in because sometimes when you're at home, you got this side dialogue going on. And you don't know what Brad's saying, but since I've been in the booth, just everyone at home knows there is a side dialogue well, there's, here. Well, there's always something in your other ear. You're in one ear and Brad's in the other ear. And yeah, exactly. So you got you to focus on one thing. And right now we're focused on group number two, second round of practice. The track is slowed down just a little bit. Colby, are you surprised at that at all? No, it, it's getting dry quick. The sun, so the sun's out now and it's kind of getting hot. I don't, I haven't been out there for a little bit, but when I was, when I was crutching my way back. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Yeah, so, you just see all the dust there, and the track's just starting to get dry, and you can see the bikes still look like good grip, but it is dry, so it will be slowing down. And then you see those braking bumps starting to form into the final corner there and into turn one. So, yeah, it's no surprise to me that it's slowing down now. So braking bumps similar to what they have on motocross tracks, right? Just not quite as big and bumpy because it's, it's, it's packed down pretty hard. Look at this drone shot, turn one and two, the different lines oh, yep. you can see them taking going in high, squaring off the corner, going in low, then drifting wide. Uh-oh, the 40 bike puts his hand up in the air. That is Olin Kistler. He's trying to get out of the way, and that's a bad spot to put your hand up right there, Colby. Yeah, that is. Luckily, it's just free practice, so everyone can kind of keep calm through there, and these times don't necessarily matter, but that is a terrible oh, spot. Hold on a second. You said keep calm? I don't remember ever keeping calm at the Peoria TT. <laughs> no, no, definitely not, <laughs> especially like 10 years ago when I was uh, when I was out here. It, it, there wasn't much calmness. I was, I was nervous. Did you like this track? I got a podium here once, but no, I, like I was telling Kristen, I kind of, this is the first place that I ever really injured myself. I broke my hand here and um, I thought I was fine, but it, it's tricky. I didn't have a motocross background growing up, which definitely helps you here, but this jump's just so unique. Even the best motocrossers could still at times struggle over this. Sometimes, you know, you might find a kicker on the face of it, which you always want to go out the morning of and make sure that that face is completely smooth. And you kind of want to pick the exact, you know, six, 10 inches of where you want to launch from. They kind of swing out wide off the of turns one and two and then bring it back towards the left over the jump and try to land and, and try to shorten out the track, if that makes sense. You know, kind of cut off some of the ground and, and not make that drastic of a turn. Yeah, if you jump straight, you pretty much end up off the track. So you are forced to do the right to left up the face. And it, it really varies by how hard you want to jump. Like if you want to go far off the jump and really carry a bunch of speed up the face and be almost wide open all the way up, you're going to have to really make sure that you're perfect coming off. But it's pretty easy if you just kind of want to roll up to the face of it and roll out and not jump too far. And I think part of the key, too, is to land on the throttle. That helps the suspension rebound a little bit and get you driving to that next corner. The biggest keys that I always found here were squeeze with your knees, but the most important one is to make sure you're on the throttle just a little bit off the face. If you, if you cut the throttle right on top of the face, the bike will absolutely kick left or right. So that's pretty sure what I did in 2013. Does it kick the front end down too at the same time or just depends on what it's, speed you're hitting it, it? The front end would be fine. It's just the kick when it goes left. When that back end starts going left, it's, there's, I mean, you've seen Cody Cop save it here and you've seen some amazing saves, but more times than not, when it goes left, you're just along for the ride, unfortunately. It's high size, yeah, yeah, it's never fun. Checkered flag coming out, our second group, second round of practice here. That's your uh, AFT singles class, and that is the Parts Unlimited AFT singles presented by Kicker Class. There's Bronson Pierce, the 132. He's a full-time FIM Supermoto racer. He's racing with us here and is going to race the Sturgis TT. So it's good to see him back in competition here at Progressive American Flat Track. He's up to 11th right now, so there's a look from up above. That's the infield section. What I liked when I came down here and raced is you're down in the valley, and then people can go through the tunnels and be in the infield, not necessarily right by your pits, but they can be at that fence right there. You can go conversate and talk to, to your, your fans and sign autographs right there. Uh, again, the, the open paddock area will be after the races today, then the pits will be open, but you can still get pretty close to all the action. Yeah, it's neat. And if you've never been here, like that tunnel, you can kind of see people coming out of. It's kind of leaky 